Hello and welcome. My name is Prue or Prue LaRue and today I am bringing you back another one of my five things series and today I am doing the five things that surprise me about makeup lovers. Having been an avid YouTube watcher for quite a while now, um, especially of the makeup beauty community, there are, I came up with five things that really surprised me about people. Number one thing that surprised me is that anyone has a backup drawer of makeup. Like, why would you buy a backup product? That, I mean, I sort of, I understand it. Like you've bought something, you loved it, and then you're like, oh, hell yeah, like I'm gonna keep using this. It's just that I've never panned anything in my life. I don't understand the function, functionality of it. And I feel like if a product's reformulated, I'm happy to just keep riding the wave. The only backup I've ever bought is for the two Faced, is the is this the Too Faced Shadow Insurance Primer, and that's because I love eyeshadow primer. And I bought this ages ago, and this is still going. Um, I've only just cracked into this, and I know I bought this months ago. It's been in my drawer for months. I've only just started. I've only just been able to open it. So to me, backups just take up extra space in my area, and I don't understand why people have them. I struggle with the concept of buying multiples of products that you have because usually it's pretty easy to just pick it up. It's, I don't know. I don't think I've ever been a victim of loving a product and it being taken from the shelves and being really sad about it. So I don't know. Like, you know, for example, I got this. So Sucks to be you if you didn't buy it. But would I buy two of them? No. Oh, why would I want a backup? I got one. Anyway, another one of the things that I want to talk about is some of the favorites that people have. So this is like number two. Um, I love it when you find out that someone has a very specific favorite product. Like, because I think it's so personal. And a lot of us with makeup, especially when you're filming like a YouTube channel, you have a lot of makeup. And I mean, to be honest, like one of my favorite things is that uh, with Annette, Annette's makeup corner is you always know she's going to use Bad Girl Bang. And she's tried to use other mascaras, but like, it's just her favorite. She loves it. And that just makes me happy. So I love seeing those surprise little favorites that people have. And like the ones that you see in every video that you know is a true favorite, not just a, my five favorites. Um, let me know what your favorites are. If like you feel like it, I'd love to know what your like surprise favorite is. Like, do you have a favorite blush, favorite bronzer, like that product that you use every time and just love. I would say one of them is the Too Faced Shadow and Trips. But one of my other favorite products is this stupid stick from KKW Beauty, the light contour. I'm wearing it today and I just find it so easy for me to contour with and it blends out beautifully. I, I can't go heavy with it. It just makes it like, I love a product like that. And um, this is one that I know I sort of touch about in my lipstick to color. But I don't know where this video is going in comparison to the lipstick declutter. So we'll talk about it then. And that is how skin type affects application. Now I never fully understood this until I bought lipsticks based off Kitsch Stitch and Just By The Makeup. The two girls from Beauty News recommendation of the Hourglass Confession lipsticks. They love them. I don't get it. I've got them. They're creamy. They're nice. They don't last on me at all, and yeah, I'm just not a fan. That, that was an expensive lesson to learn. And also, they're they're obsessed with the... I've got my little bag. These Tony Molly lip tints. To the point that there was a sale on Maya, and Kitsha had just done her video... Oh, put it down below. Swatching all the lipsticks and showing how well they last on her. These lipsticks don't last more than four hours on me. But on her, they last 24 hours because she has a different skin type to me and her lips must be different. And that is just crazy to me. Like I honestly thought that all our lips must be similar, but like they're not. So I now know that anyone who recommends Tony Molly lip tints, lip, like lip tints or the Hourglass Confession lips, we have different lipstick preferences. Anyone on the other hand who recommends the Jeffree Star lipsticks or the Kat Von D liquid lipsticks, very similar preferences. And it's fascinating to me that that is how that works. And it's also a very handy thing to do, to try out a product that a YouTuber you're watching is recommending and see what you think about it 
and then you can sort of figure out how the recommendations work for you. And that doesn't, like, I love watching Kitch Stitch and Just By The Makeup and Beauty News. They're my favourite channels to watch. But because I've done that, I now know, and that's, it's fine. I don't think they'd give a shit. And number four, the fourth thing that surprised me is that people don't always use their rewards. Oh, what the fuck? Rewards are my favourite thing ever. I love rewards. I love getting rewards. I love getting all the rewards. I love getting birthday rewards. I love getting my makeup done at Mecca for like no reason. And I love confusing them because they always ask me. Oh, so what are you up to today? Nothing. Okay. Um, what do you make it for? Nothing. I just want to, I just want, I just, you know, you sent me an email for my free makeover and I'm, I'm here. Please apply makeup to my face because it makes me happy. Um, and to be honest, I love it having someone there trapped for the, like the hour or so and just talking makeup with them for an hour. I can talk about makeup for days. But yeah, the fact, and like Sephora, I love getting Sephora swag like a while ago. And I know I showed you these, I know I showed you these, but these like brush containers and they've got the lids. I think those are like 500 points from Sephora. See, they've got this cute little lid and then you can like put it on there. But, you know, I don't have the correct brushes at the moment. See, it clips in. I mean, it's really good if you're a makeup artist. Like, I'm not, obviously. But I just love having Sephora swag. Like, use your rewards. What else are they going to do? They're just going to sit there. Like, enjoy getting some free shit. It makes me happy. Anyway, just for general, I, I don't understand how anyone could not use their rewards. Rewards are my favorite. And the fifth thing. And we might get a little semi-controversial with this one. How much people care about the people behind the brand? I don't really want to know everything about who the people behind the brand. Because, like, I'm really fussy with the people that I like. And the more I know about you, the more I might not like you. And if you just make good makeup... I just, I just want to enjoy the good makeup. I don't want to know that this, you know, um, like there's a big difference to me between like a YouTuber collab where they've named the shadows after that and then I'm buying it because I love the YouTuber. So when it's a YouTuber collab, I understand having them having like one palette and then they've named the shadows something that means something to you. And then me or you as a viewer, we feel connected to that person. So it's like nice. Um, when it's an owner of a brand, and they're creating all the palettes. I just, I am happy for them to just keep it professional. I do not need to know all the details of your life. And I get trying to be relatable. I get it. I get it. Um, I, for me, I just, I just don't understand wanting to know lots about the owners behind a brand. Like per se, I want to know what brought them into making makeup. Do they make the makeup themselves? Is it in a lab? Uh, where are they located? What's the shipping? Um, what do the eyeshadows look like and what are the current reviews out there? I don't really want to see, I don't want to see any unprofessional behavior and I don't want to see you being underhanded or passive aggressive in any of your posts. Uh, that gives me a bad taste in my mouth, but I, at the same time, I will just ignore it because if the makeup's good, the makeup's good. And that's what I'm here for. I'm not here for all your drama. The, and this is for me in particular, a case that, um, Uh, so Kat Von D as a brand that I have loved for a very long time and in Australia what was is one of the brands that you can get um, high-end colorful eyeshadows there's just not that not that many brands out there doing that um, but and this was interesting to me I was just talking to Annette about this the other day but a little while ago the World Health Organization released the top 10 threat global threats to the world and on that list is vaccine hesitancy <sighs> which you know um Camondi obviously came out as an anti-vaxxer she has still not come down off that perch and to be honest she is releasing like crappy products her brand was at the height of everything uh just before she shot herself in the foot and with vaccine hesitancy now being a global threat, like, 
I don't want anyone to ever look at me and because I'm using a Kat Von D product think that I support her anti-vax threats. I'm not really sure how to go forward with this. Uh, one of her palettes, um, I did buy all the things that I owned from Kat, Kat Von D, I did buy from her prior to her coming out as an anti-vaxxer. Um, and I have not bought anything from her, the brand since. Oh, sorry, I do realize that I just semi-lied. So there are two shadows, two singles that I bought in September 18. From Kat Von D, uh, one is Thunderstruck and one is Electric Warrior. And I bought these because this is the old formula prior to them being vegan. Uh, because I feel like since she's made her eyeshadows vegan, they haven't been as good. But in saying that, this palette, I believe, is vegan. Is the vegan eyeshadow formula? I, I do. I absolutely love this palette. Um, and I don't know what to do about this. Yeah. So this is the vegan eyeshadow formula. Um, I have heard that like the new Thunderstruck is a lot crumblier and not as good. And that is the reason that I bought this single and I got it, I think it was like 20% off in the Sephora sale. I don't really know what to do with these products because I love them so much and they are really good. But the problem is that she, she came out as an anti-vaxxer, like she didn't have to. Um, I was buying her stuff, like I, I think she's a, like not a very interesting person. I didn't like her on that ink show. Um, I didn't like it. Like I've never followed her as a person and I've never been into her aesthetic. But she had to come out with something that like she had to come out with with a view that endangers other people's other people. Um, and that endangers the world. Like I don't want to see people die from preventable diseases. And if supporting her in any way makes someone think it's that's okay, I'm sorry, I can't, like I can't talk about things before. But I, I've I've seen people die from these preventable diseases, um, like some of these preventable diseases, and it's devastating. There's a reason that they did create vaccinations to get rid of them because they are so deadly. Um, they're not easily curable. So I, I don't know. And for so long I've held on to the Kat Von D products because like, like I said, I love them. I don't know. And I feel like, um, like I do feel really strongly about being a pro vax, pro having a pro vaccination stance. So just let me know what you think about Kat Von D, where we're going. I'm a hundred percent not buying any new products from her. I feel like the new vegan formula in some areas does let some things down. Uh, this palette is like uh, was very limited edition and I haven't I, like it's not around anymore I don't really like the I don't really like the stupid picture anyway but I do like the shadows inside it and I feel like some of these colors are really unique uh, but maybe I should spend some time and try and dupe it out um, and then get rid of it that way I'm just not sure yeah um, I just don't know and you know it's the same with like Jeffree Star with his problematic past um, and sometimes like sometimes I think he just shouldn't be on social media <laughs> um, he does some really nice things but he gets into some like weird arguments that I understand but ultimately like I he's never come out with something like for as racist as he's ever been um, I mean, like, can you say racism doesn't kill? Because it can. I just think that vaccination is something that is so crazy to me that anyone would be against. Um, I don't know what to do. And it's, like, Kat Von D's fault for coming out and, like, releasing her personal views. Uh, they didn't need to be associated with the brand. She could have just kept it on the up-up. Being cruelty-free vegan, that's, like, just on trend now. I love the shadows. I struggle to find stuff of similar quality. Um, they are the same shades, but I'm I'm not gonna buy from her anymore. I'm not sure what to do with this palette. I have tried selling the ones. If you remember my ages ago, there is my products that are on the shopping list. I think I sold like four of those palettes. I've still got some around. Um, and I can definitely do an update of where those palettes are. But yeah. Anyway, um, let me know. I know that this is a topic that has just been beaten like a dead horse, but you know. 
I feel like it's still relevant. It's still relevant. Anyway, on that kind of sad note, thank you so much for watching. Um, I absolutely appreciate and adore you. Mwah.